Cool. So um, a bit more advanced setup here and um, actually just using a kick, a snare and a hi-hat and one electronic pad here. So um, I mentioned this earlier, I'm using those um, triggers here um, on the snare drum and on the kick drum as well. On the hi-hat there is a uh, piezo pickup. And this is all going into a trigger to MIDI interface, the E-pad as well. And then I'm getting MIDI notes in Ableton. So that's very similar actually to the SPDSX pads, but it's just external pads creating those um, um, trigger signals and they are then converted into MIDI. And then it's like playing an E-piano actually. Um, you can trigger sounds here as well, but you're only getting one note per pad or per um, trigger. So um, I created a, a device which lets you like trigger a sequence of notes one after one. And I quickly want to show you this. Um, you're not gonna understand everything here at the beginning, but I made like uh, two really long videos with example sets um, for this device here. So if you want to dive deeper, um, they are on uh, YouTube just Ableton Drummer there as well. It's like um, without a gap, so Ableton Drummer in one word. And you can dive deeper in here. I quickly just want to show you how you can um, set this up or how a more complex Max for Life device for triggering melodies could look like or would look like. So um, I'm going to share you my screen again. And you can see now I have one track where I have one device in front of a, a grand piano plugin. So I, if I'm now playing um, and activating this um, track now here, um, you can see that when I'm playing, I'm getting all those different MIDI note pitches here and they are going into the grand piano um, preset from Ableton Live, but only one note. So I have this device here, which is very similar. The editing is very similar to editing in a, a MIDI clip. So you get the piano roll here where you can um, move up. If I get the uh, it's sometimes acting weird because of Zoom. Interesting. Ah, okay. So I can go up here and just put in a melody. And I have the preview button here as well. As well. So if I'm putting in a note, I can just get... I can hear those notes here as well. I'm just putting in a random melody. Let's put this up here. So maybe like this, something like this. So. I'm getting now this melody here and I can now trigger this melody step by step. So I'm going to use the trip button here now. Yeah, just some random notes in here as well. And now I could set um, the step, the steps, how many steps this sequence should have. So I put this down to seven. And now when I'm at the end of the sequence, I can trigger this through. And I can do this via my SPDSX here or via a drum trigger. This would be like, could, would work with every external MIDI hardware or even with your with your computer keyboard. So this could be a push. This could be any other MIDI hardware which, which is sending MIDI notes. So you just need to set the pitch of your MIDI notes, which are coming in here as well. So um, I can press S here again for sync. And now this field here is waiting for the pitch I'm going to be sending in when I'm hitting this pad here. So now it's synced already. It's a G, G sharp three. And I can now trigger through this, this sequence here.
Yeah. So far, so easy. So I have a few more little things I want to show you here. The, the device goes quite deep. You can copy stuff um, from sequences. You can even import stuff from uh, MIDI clips here. So if you have notes in here, you can import those notes as well. And the velocity as well. You have a velocity window here as well. You can change the velocity uh, and the duration. And um, you can set sequences here as well, and then or set scales here as well, I meant, and then just um, use those different buttons, um, for example, to go back, one step back, or to repeat the last note. Uh, it's playing me two notes for some reason. Okay, random as well. You can press reset as well. So you will start at the beginning again, and you can jump to certain points here as well. So um, if you, for example, have 64 steps in here, you might want to jump to a certain point in your sequence here. And this is the way how to do this. So questions so far. Um, going to wrap up after I showed you one more thing. So if you've got any questions left, please ask them now or come into the Ableton on our Facebook group or um, write me an email or we get in contact different way. So there was a question about if you could explain um, the, can you go back one tab to trigger edit? Yes. The uh, jumps a little bit more in detail. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, Jumps just mean, so let's set up a sequence where we have like, let's say 60 notes. Um, ah, I got a good idea. So I can combine this. So let's say I want a um, scale. I want to input a scale here from, a, let's take C1 and let's put in a pentatonic minor, for example. I'm going to apply this scale here. And now I'm going to have, I can even fold this to make this visible a bit better. So I now get a C pentatonic minor scale here. And let's say I want to jump to the C2. Um, so which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth step here, always when I'm hitting one certain pad. So I could set this up here and say jump to six. So when I'm now pressing this button, or I could map this or um, do this via um, a, a pad here as well, I'm always jumping to the six button here and maybe put this one to one. So now I'm jumping between one and six. And if I combine this with my pads here, I'm now going forward with the first pad. This is what we set up, what I set up first. Yeah, so this way you can navigate through the sequence in uh, various ways. And um, what's really nice here as well is if you're gonna use the random function here. Let's set this up with another pad and then get a nice sound, uh, a different sound than the piano. Maybe let's take some vibes via phone. Maybe what do we get in here? So just that it's really a good example to show you. Let's, let's take Let's take something like this. So it's getting a bit more musical now. So I can trigger forward with the first pet here. And then I maybe want to jump to a random point. And this would be the fourth pet. I get up to 16 sequences. 
So I could set up different scales here as well, jump through different scales, and then um, have for my kick drum, for my snare drum, for my hi-hats, different uh, tracks here with different melody trigger devices. That's the name of the device on here. And this way I can get really musical with my drum kit here as well.